one in the world. So they wore the short one in the The double Yeah, it wasn't on there. Oh, it was the one here? He said, well, the opera is the one. Oh, the one So I guess. But they know. I don't understand how it's about to put it in the So that's yeah, well, they thought we made you get a clock on the three meals. Realistic? Oh, well, he's one. So three minutes. Well, good morning. It's 9.30. I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's our regular board meeting, October 23, 2015. And if you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll start. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't see any guests to introduce, so we'll go through that and uh, ask for a motion to approve the agenda or we'll modify it. Uh, uh, Commissioner, I would um, move the, or uh, would like to remove item number two from the agenda as those items were dealt with at our September 25th regular meeting. You can check it in the minutes. It's items number two. Uh, Three and four, they were voted on and action taken already. So which one is item? Item right number two, page. involving the disposal of gazebos and promoter mm -hmm. tractor. They were voted, uh, motions made and action taken at our September 25th regular meeting already on those two items. You can see them in your minutes, items number three and four from September 25th. Mr. Chair, uh, be, before before we have discussion, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, there is a motion by Mr. Handel, a second to remove item number two from the agenda. Um, any discussion? We'll go to Lance CS1. You know, I, <coughs> I recall, and I, I was going to segregate the minutes also, because I recall the the, uh, the gazebos, and I recall the Kubota tractor. What I recall specifically was that uh, Jill had said that we would bring this up next year on the disposal of the Kubota tractor. Yes, three, yeah. the minutes say three months. I don't I don't recall hearing three months. I because I thought to myself, here we go again. We'll bring this thing up, and we'll we'll go through it again next year. I, I would like to have some discussion on that removal of the Kubota tractor from from part of the inventory that we have here. Whether it's three months or next year, there, there certainly would be discussion when it comes back to the agenda. Yeah, except that there was there's a motion on the floor to to remove that. So if it's removed and, it, and it's approved, then it's a done deal. The, the goodbye Kubota travel. No, 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 no. It's removed from the, the agenda not to discuss it whatsoever because it was previously adjusted. It says that it was tabled until for three months. The gazebos, the motion failed to remove them. So the gazebos stay and next year we readdress the tractor because right. three months from now will be next year. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's, that's my recollection. Okay, that's, that's all right. Too. Okay. Now, having heard your comments on this the reason it's on the agenda is because i requested it to be on the agenda for discussion even though we took action before we can still amend that action by the majority vote of this board and the reason for doing that is 
my thought was, should we let the staff have the opportunity to dispose of that equipment at a minimum price? For example, if we set a minimum price for disposal at $1,500 for the gazebo, then, then the, the staff has the authorization from the board to proceed with that if somebody comes in and says, hey, you know, I'd like to buy that. And maybe they'd offer sixteen hundred for it. I don't know. The same way with the tractor. The tractor is depreciating every every day. It has eleven hours. It's been used. It's been here for a little over two years, two years and four months or something like that. It has very limited use. And when you do the math on that stuff, snow removal and some maintenance that that thing can have. In the way I look at the numbers, would be substantial savings by contracting or renting equipment and using the proceeds from the gazebo and that tractor to go toward equipment that is more urgent for our needs. In the meantime, the tractor is like brand new, sits there with the little nubbies on it, on the tires, and it's an asset that's sitting there not doing a darn thing for us when we have needs for other more urgent equipment. So if you don't want to have the discussion, it's up to the board to say we're taking it off the agenda and that's fine. Or we have the discussion to say we're going to take action and allow the uh, staff to dispose of that equipment. So any further discussion on this item before I call for the question? Yeah. I'd like to amend the motion, make a motion to amend the motion to take item number two and refer it back to a work session for discussion. Second that. Okay, there's a there's no public comment on the, the action here right now. Um, there is a motion by Ms. Johnson and a second by Ms. Henderson to amend the primary motion to refer this agenda number two item to the next work session, workshop session. And I can just I just want to talk about it at a work session first. And come to any work session we have time in my opinion can we be specific about any time i don't know what's on our schedule for the next work session so i don't want to put it there until i know what's on the schedule but the okay. next work session the motion see. is the next work session sure the motion is the next work session we go. the motion is for the next work session and the second by miss henderson any discussion on the amendment to the primary motion Hearing that, I will call for the question that we amend the primary motion to defer item number two to the next workshop session for discussion. Any further discussion on that? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It carries unanimously. So the primary question or motion is to delete this item number two, two from the current agenda. All those in favor say aye. Yeah, motion. Yeah. Yeah. With, with the prize all said it will be on the next work session. Yeah. As amended. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> That's also the man was made. So it's off item number two is off this agenda and referred back to the next work session. Okay. With that, I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I'll second it. There's a motion by Ms. Jensen, Johnson, second Mr. Hanel, to approve the, um, the agenda as amended. Question from Lance. <coughs> question from Lance. Um, <coughs> on the vouchers, I had one, one question. Um, We're talking about the agenda, not the topic items. We'll get that with the I thought agenda. this was under the consent agenda. No, this is the, the overall, overall agenda. Okay. I hate to admit I made a mistake, but I made a mistake. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> 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 All right. Did we get that okay? Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, the motion has been made to uh, approve the amended agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried unanim unanimously. So the next item now is. Uh, to approve the consent agenda and um, or take action on that. I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda minus 
the pre-audited audited voucher list. Okay. So that we can discuss the voucher list. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I second it. There's been a motion made to approve the consent agenda less the September 15 pre-audit master voucher list in the amount of $166,604.41. Any discussion? <coughs> Did you have anything to add to that, Lance? No. Okay. Um, very no further comments. Uh, call for the question. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very unanimously, the consent agenda is approved with the modification of the removal of the pre audit master value. So you pull that off, Ms. Johnson, so you can talk about your questions. I understand that there's questions about the, the voucher list. So I thought we would need time to discuss that. That's my entire reason for pulling it. Okay. Take the lead. Lance, do you have questions? You know, I hate to say this again. I never make two mistakes in one session, but drawing my line across on, on one item, I noticed that I... Take us to your page number. No, it's it's okay. <laughs> right. I, I withdraw because All right. I, can't, I can't say, I can't get the word out, M-I-S-T-A-K-P. <laughs> Twice. I should just leave now. <laughs> oh, hang in there. Well, with that, I'd make a motion to approve the voucher that's presented. All right. Second that. There's a motion by Ms. Johnson and a second by Ms. Henderson to approve the voucher as presented. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries unanimously, and uh, the agenda has been approved as really submitted. Now we're going to move on to our monthly reports. We'll start with the executive director's report. Any report for us? A couple of reports, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'd like to report to the board that um, two weeks ago we, well, not we, the maintenance department uh, performed their first ever uh, heavy-duty Cummins engine rebuild on a 40-foot bus and uh, that was very successful in the regard that um, it was done with the guidance of a Cummins uh, field tech representative overseeing uh, two of our uh, highly capable mechanics uh, to perform the work it was accomplished in a week's time and uh, we saved a considerable amount of money than uh, sending it out like we have in the past. And uh, this is just the beginning. We're going to have the second one in December, I think, uh, without the field rep and uh, just our two mechanics at it. And um, I think we should be very, uh, very proud of the fact for an organization this size to have the in-house capability of rebuilding heavy-duty engines. I think that's a, a tremendous a uh, tremendous plus for us, uh, saving us money from sending those engines out for rebuilding. So um, I wanted to mention that. What, what what would be the average savings for engines? Do you have an estimate? I want to say three to five thousand. Um, <coughs> roughly six. Six. It could be a little minutes. bit more. Could be a little bit less. You say on savings. Like Talking about savings, Rick? In-house yeah. versus out-house. Instead of cost savings. No, the, the savings of rebuilding it instead yeah, of sending it out. Okay. That's, that's good. And there's some other indirect savings as well. Um, we had a new engine done last year. And we saved about 15 to 20 thousand dollars on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's the average savings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's good. Ownership, very good. Good job, Ken. Yeah, yeah. outstanding. Yeah. So I have a question for you then, Ken and Ken. <laughs> um, how much did it cost, your in-house tally on how much did it cost, do you know, approximately? How many miles um, were on the bus that required you to do this 
repair or was it a failure in the engine? And what is the mileage life extension of that vehicle approximately? Yeah. Cummins recommends 400,000 for the rebuilds and we were approaching around 380, 390 on that. Uh, being the first one that we've actually take, uh, took apart and, and looked inside, we wanted to be, uh, make sure that we weren't going to have three or four buses down all at the same time. Uh, Parts-wise, we were looking at close to between eighteen and 20000 on, on this particular job. Is that right? And labor-wise? And labor-wise, uh, we had, well, it was more of a training, kind of a training overseeing situation on that, so the labor was... Uh, quite costly. Uh, I think the Cummins representatives was roughly five thousand dollars a month here for the whole week, and then our cost for our two guys for the week that is how much. So what what is right now? Even though it includes training, what is the cost of of rehabbing that engine? I haven't worked out all the numbers because I I don't I haven't included our labor. Uh, we have we pay the guys whatever they work on here, um, so I didn't include that in the cost of the. Uh, we don't do. We do. But that's a fixed that. cost. It doesn't that's mean if they're, yeah. if they're right. rebuilding an engine or or fixing a tire, we're paying the same amount of money. Right. Yeah. No, I understand that, but I'm I, what I'm okay. concerned about is or not or curious, not concerned about what is the life extension to this vehicle for spending. 30, probably a minimum of 30, close to $40,000 to 400,000 miles. For, it extends at 400,000 miles. Correct. So that means we're going to get 800,000 miles out of that vehicle? We should be able to without an issue. And, and the, At least out of the engine portion of it. Yeah. Um, the, the bodies have been known, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, roughly some, of, some people run those buses 18 years uh, after they rebuild the engine. Well, I like that strategy. <laughs> yeah, that's a considerable. Yeah. Did you have any comments? Oh, just uh, the initial cost of one of those buses is over four hundred thousand. Over four hundred thousand dollars for one bus. Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a ten to one type investment. That extent that doubles the life. Yeah. Yeah. That's a return. Is that's it possible to do that on the, the smaller buses too? Um, I don't believe the bodies would withstand the length of time that we okay. would need to recoup that cost. Okay. Okay. All right. Is that all? Oh, and one other item, um, uh, kind of a groundbreaking item that uh, this past Tuesday, uh, managers of Walker, uh, Skagit, and myself met with. Uh, executive director and a couple of his staff from Community Transit. Um, and we had a very good, uh, uh, at Community Transit, and a uh, very good discussion about uh, uh, regional approach to, uh, to transit, uh, as far as funding, as far as planning, as far as, um, we had a, a good discussion about social service uh, transportation, um, uh, providing better uh, inter-county service for um, uh, for veterans, for those who need to go to hospitals in uh, uh, Seattle or even Mount Vernon, um, and, um, uh, and a lot of discussion about the I-5 corridor and how we can better serve that. Uh, possibly having a spine sort of operation through the corridor with feet, with more feeder services from the local county transportation districts. Um, and then we, uh, we also talked about funding and, and uh, what the opportunities are there for, um, for some joint, uh, 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 joint funding amongst the four operations. Um, and then also, um, regarding service to Everett, um, they have offered us um, use of their Smoky Point uh, Transit Center uh, for us to transfer uh, if we want to use it for 412 service, uh, uh, providing 412 service to uh, Smoky Point, which gives, which would give riders greater options from Smoky Point throughout Snohomish County, even down to Linwood, catching buses to Seattle. So that's uh, uh, that's an interesting concept. It has a lot of benefits to it. We might be able to uh, 
we should be able, if we did that, uh, and of course we need to work out the numbers and provide a presentation to the board, but um, that could possibly extend our dollars in terms of providing more service to Smoky Point um, uh, versus the limited number of trips we could provide to, down, to the college of downtown Everett. So we may be able to make better use of our dollars by just going to Smoky Point back and forth and uh, being able to connect um, to local and express services that community transit offers from Smoky, from Smoky Point. And their intent is in the long term to uh, create a North County uh, hub there and possibly in future years extending their bus rapid, rapid transit service all the way to Smoky Point. So um, I think it's an excellent opportunity and um, um, they've offered that to us if we want to use it. and. Um, um, and they said it would be uh, it would really be nothing involved in it, just to tell them when we want to start using it, and that would pretty much suffice. It sounds promising on the surface. We yes. are making progress with our adjoining transit districts. Uh, I have found them to be very cooperative in the meetings that we've had with them. Um, and in fact, I found them to be enthusiastically engaged in our problem and helping us with uh, solve some of the uh, problems that we have here. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Any other questions for Ken on that topic? Well, Mr. Chandler, I just wanted to also say that it's refreshing to see the spirit of cooperation more so. It reminds me of uh, law enforcement jurisdictions that, that try to put this spirit of cooperation amongst themselves too. So that's, that's a great report for you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Next item is the chair's report. The only thing I have to report. Oh, well, oh, excuse me. I was I was going to do that, but I thought we would. What do you consider wrapping that into our finance agenda item? I think that sounds great. That you should communicate. Yes. Thank you very much. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love having Joe right on my sleeve. <laughs> my very few strengths. Yeah, Maybe I, I did. I did jump in through that. So, uh, with the board's approval. <laughs> And with Mother Jill's approval, <laughs> can we can we uh, we combine the finance report with our agenda item on the same topic? Does that serve everybody's? Uh, see, okay. The chair's report. The only thing I want to comment on that is we made really good progress with uh, Tiger Construction. It's not finished yet. However, the subcontractors have been paid their retention. Almost a half a million dollars has been in escrow waiting for some kind of resolution to what's happening out there and and that's 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 one more step to solving some of our, our issues here. We still have some things to deal with. The sample patch in there uh, it's the, the Euclid chemical company that provided the product. They provided the direction for the patch. It didn't work out the way any of us are happy with. It is, to me, it's unacceptable. I think it's unacceptable to the staff, and and it's actually unacceptable to Tiger too. Um, it's a it's a um, catalytic problem, a product that just set up way too fast for them to get a proper finish on it, and it's going to have that sample has to be redone. We're going to look at other options for finishing those floors. And I had a meeting with uh, Ken and have asked him to get the direction, the written direction of the architect on an alternative approach to solving that problem in there. The, uh, he is the author of record of our contract documents. The direction has to come from him. But we are moving forward. And in the meantime, we still hold about $30,000 of Tiger's money, which will not be released until this is resolved. Uh, but Tiger, I got to tell you, I've been really impressed with how cooperative they have been working toward this. Thing. That's the end of my report. Mr. Chair, can I make a comment on something? Yes. Um, in my, um, I'm the director of Island County Human Services, and one of my staff every year does a uh, transition fair for students with disabilities who are coming out of our local high schools. And our one for this year was held now a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to compliment Dee Wallace, who was there representing Island Transit and Paratransit. Um, she set up a great little booth kind of to give uh, families and individuals with disabilities information, not, on, not only on 
regular transit and how she can help train people to ride the regular routes but on paratransit. Just really, uh, my office really appreciated her being there. She's always been just stellar in working with any of our families who have indivi individuals in their family with uh, disabilities. So I just wanted to get that on the record that I really appreciated her being there. Mm -hmm. who, who represented Island Transit in the catch? Oh, Dee. Uh, Dee Wells. Dee Wells, our paratransit manager. Great. Thank you, Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments before we move on to our agenda number item number one? We're moving on to agenda item number one: the county connector legislative funding proposal. And uh, Ken, do you want to take the lead on that? Yeah, this is just an informational item, but uh, in its in its early stages. But I wanted the uh, board to be um, informed from the start as far as our efforts. I say our, mainly uh, Island, Whatcom, and Skagit, uh, our efforts to uh, come up with a more solidified approach to obtaining a more permanent funding source for uh, intercounty <coughs> services um, at the state level. And um, uh, we have proposed uh, a concept and, and uh, an idea to the state association, uh, small and uh, rural and small urban transit systems, um, to kind of open up this concept to any other small agencies that may have similar intercounty issues as we do, and um, um, to make it a our feeling is to make it uh, a statewide sort of. Uh, uh, item for other transit agencies would certainly. Um, provide us more uh, statewide support for this issue in Olympia than just isolating it to the Northwest uh, Washington transit systems. Um, so far we've, we've found that um, there actually, uh, there are other transit systems, a couple others that do have intercounty services, but they're already funded and uh, don't have the same sort of unique situations that we do in our region. So. Um, while we've opened it up or, or uh, put it out there as a statewide sort of initiative with the association, um, it still uh, looks like it may be uh, primarily a Northwest Washington um, uh, initiative. So um, our feeling is we didn't want to go, we didn't want to go around the association or other possible operations that may have similar issues. Um, and um, feel that we could get more support if, if it had statewide interest or at least statewide knowledge. Um, so the, the kind of the genesis of that effort is outlined in my memorandum and then also in your packet is a kind of an information piece um, that we put together stating what the problem is, the solution, um, but we have not come up yet with funding um, with funding levels or funding criteria, um, that still needs to be discussed. That will take a while to uh, go through various reviews. Um, and certainly, um, we're looking for all the input we can get from boards and other jurisdictions to uh, make sure that this gets crafted uh, properly at the start. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can uh, answer questions now, or if there are questions later on, just email me, and and, um, and we can talk about it that way. Well, how are some? You said some of the other um, transit that go between, <coughs> in between counties do have funding. So where is their funding from? Um, they're local sources. Okay. Um, you know, they um, some cases have have um, evolved that way from the beginning. So that was just. Uh, just a part of their, their regular operations. Um, down in the Long Beach area, um, that system provides uh, uh, connector service to Astoria, wow. Oregon. And their effort down there is to get Oregon State funding hmm. to, uh, mm -hmm. to help with the, hmm. the funding situation there. So that's where their, their efforts are. Um, and I believe, uh, and, and uh, Clallam has uh, inter-county service, but that's, that's 
that's been running for years as a part of their, their regular routine. So our situation is a little more unique in the, in the respect that you know, since 2005, it's been funded from legislative session to legislative session. Right. And it's been kind of a, you know, every two years, it's kind of a startup sort of situation. So um, we just don't want to have another uh, another situation that occurs where at the last minute we're going for millions of dollars, number one, and number two, that uh, you know, it's creating sort of a patchwork sort of, um, sort of issue. And, and, Going back every two years, we'd like to have a little more stability. <coughs> Any other comments? In the language, it says uh, basically funding amounts yet to be determined. I know you mentioned that they haven't done that. Um, but getting this recognized in Olympia, if they feel that the funding is not millions and millions, that it would eventually go to the legislature for a a house bill or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. And there would be, um, at least in the talking stages now, there would be some level of local commitment put into it to you know, show the local effort mm -hmm. in uh, funding the services. Sure. Good. Thanks. Um, last night um, in Oak Harbor at the Chamber office, um, the Chamber sponsored a legislative uh, information sent session with Senator Barbara Bailey and Representative Dave Hayes and Jill Johnson on updates on several items that are going on and briefly I had a chance to talk with Dave Hayes about this topic and told him that if we are working with Watkin and Skagit and community and we'll probably come forward with a a request for a dedicated source of funding for these connectors so that we have a continuous dependable routing system to um, interconnect between the different um, agencies and eliminate these gaps every two years. <coughs> Anything else? Good. All right. That concludes my report. <coughs> well, uh, that was uh, agenda item number one. We'll move on to agenda item number three, a discussion of the draft of the, this draft three of the 2016 annual budget. Should we start with financials for Paul? And the financials. Okay. Financial reports. Financial report for September. Okay. That's fine. So when we talk about cash flow, we had a large payment in September for our, our insurance, WISTIP insurance um, cost that we uh, delayed from last September. And so we actually wrote that check in September, due in October. It was about a third of a million dollars. And um, so that had an impact on our cash flow for the month of September. And you can see in this graph, uh, September, our, our cash flow decreased by a similar amount, about $300,000. Right now, our cash is $1.5 million. So if we just look at it on an annual basis, you can see where we are um, over the last about seven years. And again, we're still in that recovery mode. We're, we're accumulating cash. Um, we, we're, we've also delayed uh, some of our capital purchases, so we're, we're saving up that money to uh, meet another insurance payment in January and um, additional capital expenses that we didn't take in 15, but we'll be taking in 16. Our financial performance for the year is still uh, positive. We're about $680,000 ahead. Uh, it averages about $75,000 a month, and we're still saving to pay future capital. You can see in that one, the, the green is a, a positive, a surplus situation. Mm -hmm. And that's on an average monthly basis? or Well, this is a, just a yearly total, and, but the September 15th, the last one is just for the nine months of 2000. So, so it's just nine months? 
So the, the last least, curving. So the, the last bar will, the little green bar will be bigger by the end of the year. Yeah, we, yeah it should be. Fuel prices are down for the second straight month. Uh, you can see they, they took a little jump, but now they've, they've come back a little bit. Is, is, do you know the price per gallon on that? Is that about? Uh, it's in the ops report. I think we're. Um, yeah, I think we're a dollar eighty-eight for this past month. Oh, nice. Okay. That was our cost for unleaded. You, you mean two eighty-eight? Oh, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were great. Okay. Um, okay. And then uh, our ridership is about the same as it was last month, um, but it, it is slowly. Uh, it's, it's down for the year, I guess, if we look January versus September, and that might have something to do with the price of fuel. Um, and you can see our cost per ride went up, and that, that has a lot to do with the Vista payment. Our costs just went up. So our ridership was remaining constant. Uh, so that's all I have to say. I have a question for you, Paul. Okay. Uh, could you go back to your slide <coughs> um, on the cash flow analysis? One before that one, yeah. You this one? No, that one right there. That's up over six million. For the liquidity comparison, are you commingling for 2009, 10, 11 through that range? Does any of that include the building construction funds? That no, I think I hand? took out capital. You did take out capital. This is all operation. Um, let's see. What about local match? Um, what this no, what this is actually is, is this is just total cash. So it would include any kind of capital money that was sitting in our cash balance. So if we're looking back, like at our bank account, and there's only one account, uh, so it would include capital. So yeah. Just taking so it, yeah. in a way, it's sort of meaningful, but you yeah. kind of mix the basket with apples and oranges compared to normal well, operational times. Um, it, it is definitely combining the two, but it's not mixing. It's all the same. If we had capital uh, uh, expenses or receipts, it would impact cash in the same way in 2015 on this graph mm -hmm. as 2009. So it's just a total cash balance. Yeah, it, and that answers my question. It, it does include yeah. construction funds. It, it includes yeah. both capital and operating in the total, but it is comparable. Um, I'm, in this comparison, um, the total cash that we have in, to, as of this year or 2014 is comparable to the 2009 figure. Okay, because thank you. Because the current cash report, the very bottom line includes capital. Okay, and we'll just move on forward then with the uh, draft three of the proposed. The um, draft 3.0 that you have in front of you is uh, the latest edition of the draft resulting from uh, input and some changes um, uh, coming out of the finance committee meeting of uh, last month or this past Monday um, and also uh, there there had been a lot of discussion about uh, the way that uh, reserves are handled and and uh, that was included in that meeting as well and, and Paul will get into that um, but I wanted to make the comment that this reflects uh, what the Finance Committee input has been up to this point and will you point this out as you go along Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So there, there were um, at our last workshop meeting there was a request for a schedule to be put forward showing significant changes uh, that are happening this year, 2016 versus last year. So the finance committee examined a uh, schedule I put together, and we talked about um, making some some cuts in order to. 
to, to any significant, in, well, just making some cuts in order to fulfill also another item um, that we were talking about, which was to establish an operating reserve um, to try and fulfill two months of operating savings and an operating reserve in addition to one month's savings in um, a current cash account, general fund cash account. So we took those two um, requests and met as a finance committee and looked at the significant changes um, in this uh, current budget and we made some, um, we, we actually fulfilled those two requests. And uh, we can go through that if you'd like, uh, kind of in a step-by-step -step way. Um, um, some of the things that we, we decided at that finance committee meeting was uh, we looked at an increase uh, in the receptionist position to full time and uh, decided to keep that at half time. Um, so, uh, So we, we decided to keep that in the half-time position. There was also in the budget was uh, money set aside for an organizational review, and we decided to reduce that by $10,000. Um, there was, uh, I think, 21000 for Harbor Station painting costs, which we decided to reduce to $10,000, so a savings there of $11,000. Um, we were or uh, intending to order some bus pole seats um, I think we had 24 in the budget, and we reduced that to six, um, a savings of about $11,000. Um, we also had in there 129 schedule holders. These would be things that would hold boxes that would hold schedules for passengers to pick up at the bus stops. We cut that in half to 65, so there was a savings there about $6,300. And then uh, we also um, included. Uh, executive director moving expense for the potential new director um, at a cost of about $10,000. And then we, all, we, we also um, decided to, um, we were talking about putting about a half a million dollars in, it in 2016 into our operating, into an operating reserve account, which would um, be a kind of a reserve outside of our general operating cash. Um, but from the savings that we had um, decided at that meeting, plus a little bit of surplus that we had in the previous budget, we decided to increase the, the monies put into that operating reserve to 600000 so we would transfer 100000 of this budget into that operating reserve. Um, and that brought us to where we stand right now, the net surplus in, in draft 3.0 at thir about $13,500. Um, so that's that's the work that we did at that Monday meeting with the Finance Committee. Um, I can say that after the monies that we were planning on putting in the operating reserve for 2015, which is, um, I, think about, I think we had 650000 um, the 600000 from 2016, plus uh, additional monies that we're planning to put in there that we could, we think we can meet that that goal of two months of operating reserve, plus the one month of general operating cash. We think we can do that in five years, but we're, we're uh, planning to put forth a resolution to accomplish that task in 10 years. So, um, of course, there are a lot of variables. We don't know about the, our future funding, et cetera, but we, our plan is to try and meet that goal in five years. So that, that was a really positive um, result, I think, from, from our meeting, is that we, we think that we can find the money to meet the objectives of the board um, in terms of reserves. In five years? In five years. The Will the overall objective uh, be included in the text preceding the budget? 
I think, yes, it, we've been working on a resolution, and yeah. um, the, the drafts that I've seen, it, it does include that yeah. language. So that, I, I thought that was a, a really positive um, outcome to the meeting. Um, Also, uh, one of the handouts that we had was a listing of that schedule that was requested at our, our workshop. And it, it was a summary of significant changes between 2015 actuals and the 2016 budget. And I can go over that briefly as well. Um, there was about a 5% increase in to wages. and. Uh, Originally, that was in, um, asking for 2.5 positions being added. Uh, dispatcher Camino, um, we had a, a position in our operating department switching from a communication specialist to a PM supervisor. And um, of course, that receptionist position was in there uh, before as well, so that we made a change to that. Um, Five percent, so it actually would, have, would be decreased from that um, that number that's listed there. Um, so this uh, uh, five percent is already reflects the savings of having just a half time receptionist. No, it actually do, it looks like it doesn't. So I think okay. it does. Oh, does it? Okay. It, it corresponds to the latest budget. Okay. <coughs> I think we need to know for sure. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It doesn't show the savings. I think. Let me take. A yeah, look. there's a because you want to take. You need to take out. I can tell you pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. I was okay. looking at an older version. Excuse me. My mistake. <laughs> Bit of confession going on here today. Yeah. Should have increased. It, it looks like it does. Okay. So that there is a mistake there. It's, it would be 2.0 positions. 2.0 so positions. Yeah. That's the wording isn't proper. Yeah. It's two positions. <coughs> yeah. Um, so th those are the three items that significantly impact wages. Um, it's that first line item on this smaller handout that I'm referring to. Okay. Um, our per state pension plan, uh, we had a 21.5% increase uh, for 2016, and that's just a rate that's given to us from the, the state. And um, of course, we have a couple positions too to add to that, so that, that's the bulk of, of that 25% increase. Um, medical dental insurance, part of that is, uh, of course, new hires, and then there is a contingency for matter to be discussed in executive session by the board. Um, we have sick leave vacation and deferred compensation. The differences between that I, I think mostly uh, is it's partly because of the new hires but also there's uh, just the way that those two numbers are computed and in our accounting system things are recorded on a cash basis and in budget and we counted for it on a cool basis to take into account what will be earned over that period of time, whether or not the employees take those those sick days or vacation days, or so even participate in the 457 plan. So this represents the maximum that could be taken? It's the amount um, earned okay. in that period of time. Okay. If they've accrued sick leave in the past, they could actually take it at a greater rate than they earn it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm showing it as the amount that it was earned in 2016. Professional services, um, there's an allowance there for a search firm, executive search firm, um, a salary and organizational study, and um, labor consultant, um, and legal expenses. Um, contract repair and maintenance, um, we have some money in there to repaint. Uh, we have rewire uh, harvestation, uh, well testing, 
and uh, pumping the fuel tanks. Um, the fuel is, is budgeted in a conservative way. I'm estimating about three dollars and fifty cents per gallon. Uh, we know that the fuel prices are a little bit lower right now, but we we plan we, we have to estimate uh, what the historical figure has been, say, over the last fifteen years, uh, an average over that time frame. Um, in terms of operating supplies, we have a couple items that we'd like to purchase. Uh, we have bus stop seats, which we already talked a little bit about, poles, lights, signs, and schedule holders. Um, utilities. Uh, budgeted at the 2014 rate, even though 15 is showing a, some savings there, um, but I wanted to be conservative and budget a little higher rate there. Um, <coughs> insurance premiums are planned to go a little bit higher, just based on the, the amount of mileage that we put in. And that, that's uh, the number that I'm using there is, we, we got that directly from our insurance agent. Um, our deductible, we've been kind of fortunate this year. We haven't paid out on a deductible, but we had to make an allowance for it. So 20,000, we, we, we would have to pay it um, a $5,000 per occurrence, um, which is a possibility, so. Um, even though we were, we, we've been fortunate this year, I, I still put an allowance about $20,000 in there for that. And then training, we have, um, in 2015, we reduced our training in order to save money, um, but we'd like to restore some of that, and um, so we're seeing an increase of about $24,000. So those are the major changes between those 2015 annuals and 2016 budget. Um, so, uh, Paul, the um, contract repair and maintenance, so does that, the repaint and rewire, does that include the cut you made to the, oh, well, that's, the, yeah. The rewiring's been cut, correct? Yeah, that has been cut. So, so but, so, so the numbers, been, though, reflect. Yeah, these, these numbers reflect after okay, the changes. So, okay, and then the same with, um, oh, the, Operating supplies, the uh, seats, the poles, and stuff that reflects the company. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, I'd like to add to the uh, information on the rewiring at uh, Harbor Station. We um, did have an estimate provided to us on cost savings that it would only be five to six hundred dollars a year. Um, so that uh, eliminates the need for any electrical or rewiring work related to lighting. However, um, uh, if possible, we would like to uh, uh, move some of that money back into the Harbor Station um, actual structural work. Um, you know, and the, and the line item says repainting, but there's a whole lot more to it. In the, uh, as an example, the, the uh, metal frame, metal, metal window frames are rusting to the point where um, they're going to hold up much longer. I mean, they've rusted in some places all the way through. Um, we have uh, uh, rotten um, uh, uh, bases in some cases uh, along the bottom of, of the buildings where the concrete meets the wood. Um, we've got doors, um, steel doors, that would be included in repainting, but they definitely need to be upgraded to marine grade. Uh, uh, paint because of all the uh, deterioration due to the salt and um, there are just a lot of other little things besides repainting the outside there are a lot of other things uh, related to the bones of the structure that need to be taken care of too so what is the approximate budget that you're winding up with for Harbor Station um, it, it, it's still, I think it's still out for estimates, but we, uh, at least what I did is, uh, my thought process was that, that, that lighting money would be combined with the painting money and just, we have a reserve there until we get estimates to possibly spend, you know, $24,000 on it. Question on the windows. Many window, window manufacturers have lifetime warranties. I 
know that thing has been in there for what, 20 years now, or something close mm -hmm. to that, in that range. Mm -hmm. um, many commercial window companies have lifetime warranties on that. It seems a bit unusual that it would be, uh, is it steel, you say it's rusty, or it's aluminum, anodized aluminum, and it's pitting? No, I've got photos, it's actual rust. So it's a metal window with a powder coat finish mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, do you happen to know who the window manufacturer was? No, I don't. It's, it's probably, there's probably a sticker or an etched mark on the glass or a sticker on the frame, you know, those metallic stickers. Mm -hmm. That would be worth checking out because it seems a bit unusual that it would be rusting to the point that the whole window uh, assembly has to be replaced in 20 years. And I'm not saying necessarily that they have to be replaced, but they definitely have to be recoded or repainted to bring them back to a you know, more durable uh, standard. Yeah. No, I'm not saying replace all the frames. No, that's not where I'm coming from. But fact is they need to be they need to have a texture. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on this topic? Yes, please. Sorry. Uh, it's actually proposed wording to go along with the budget, I think. Yeah. For uh, our uh, commitment to building reserves. Uh, and um, is the suggestion that this resolution could be adopted along with the budget? Is that the idea? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a draft. A draft of a draft. Yeah. So we're not taking action on yeah. the budget. No. This is a discussion. Yeah. This is so what, what you're seeing in December. Yeah. yeah. All right. uh, one, one thing I can also mention is that with the idea of putting an operating reserve on the first sheet, you can see there's a, a line there, transfer to operating reserve, and we show $600,000 there. Um, and there also is in that pages 2.1, 2.2, under operating uh, revenues and expenses, I included a line that shows transfer from operating reserve or transferring to operating reserve. And again, you can see in 2016, in the bolded column, column four, the bottom of page 2.1, transfer to operating reserve 600,000. And then my intention, just to clarify, is that until we reach the two months operating in that operating reserve, that that really isn't surplus money. So surplus money would be money that we would have in addition to two months salary in cash and in addition, or yeah, basically two months in cash and, and two months in operating reserve. At that point, we're really saying the word surplus, but not until those goals are met. At the bottom of page 2.2, you can see the ending reserve balances. And um, the last two items on that page show operating reserve and general operating cash. So you can see it's broken out in two pieces now on that, on that statement. I just want to be very clear and deliberate that although it looks like there's money, until those goals are met, we still have an those are op that reserve is an obligation. So it's not free money. Yeah, it's not available funding until all of those goals are met. That's not surplus funding. That's available for other expenses. Any other questions, comments? Uh, just that I think the, our resolution was to turn back to the work session, next work session to discuss. I don't think this is. I mean, it's the first I've seen it. So. Like a chance to look at it, cut it, edit it, oh, right, and right. bring it back to work session. Well, this is a non action project. Right. Uh, so, so I have lots of time on that. Yes. Just working on that. Um, you know, um, you have any further presentation on The that? only other change, major change I, I can talk about or uh, comes to mind is there was a, um, we had a capital request for some replacement, a replacement of some, cap, uh, some computer items that I put into the capital section, just so it, it highlights it there. 
uh, which is on, I think, page um, 